Want a roasted turkey that is juicy and evenly cooked? Want to take the worry out of the breast being dry and the dark meat not being fully cooked? There are two keys to making this roasted turkey perfect and I'm going to show you them both. Welcome to Lawyer in the Kitchen. Today we're going to make a butterfly or spatchcock roasted turkey. And the two keys to making this thing perfect is number one, make it a spatchcock turkey. That is, we're going to take out the backbone and we're going to flip it over and break the breastbone so the whole thing lays flat so it cooks evenly and in half the time. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we use a digital instant read thermometer so that we know exactly when this thing reaches 158 degrees. And those of you who cook know that 158 degrees is not right. It's got to be at least 165, but we're going to let it rest for 30 to 40 minutes. And in that time, it should raise easily seven to 10 degrees. We should be 165, 167, 168, and that's going to be just perfect. The 165 is the minimum on the thickest parts of the meat. So today I have an 11 pound young turkey, completely thawed, rosemary, fresh from the garden, uh, some thyme, fresh from the garden, sage, fresh from the store, and garlic. I finally have a head of garlic I'm happy with. We're gonna also have some butter, some olive oil on the skin. We're going to use some kosher salt, and this is coarse kosher salt. That's important, you don't want fine, and, we won't, and we'll have pepper. Okay, so first thing we do is Get this out of the bag and wash it. So we pulled the uh, the neck out that was in here in the in the middle of the bird and do and and the gizzards and all that stuff. Make sure you check the neck where the neck was so there's nothing in there. Flip it over. We cut off the excess skin and this could be a little tough to do, especially back here at the legs. But what we're doing is we want to come down here and remove this entire backbone all the way. And we're going to start at the neck or where the wings are okay and we're just going to feel for that but once you get through this you got it whipped if you got a good set of shears this will be a piece of cake we're not going to waste this by the way we're going to save this backbone we're going to cut it up in about three four pieces and we're going to make the gravy from it so while your bird's cooking you can be making gravy. And there is the backbone. We're gonna cut this up, we'll put that in the pot, we'll brown it, we'll make the gravy from that. To cut this backbone in here with a knife a little bit and get it started. And that's one way of doing it. And that'll make it a little bit easier. But you want, you want to do is push down on both sides until you hear it crack like that. Ah, and that's it. Aww. All right, so then, and then we're gonna fold the legs in like that. And we're gonna tuck, and then we just tuck the legs like the, the wings this time. And I'm gonna get rid of the water on here and then I'm gonna start getting the salt ready. We're gonna rub this thing and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight, uncovered with coarse salt on it. And we're gonna put it all over the bird on the outside. This is the dry brining. All right, so this turkey has been in the fridge uncovered for 24 hours, a little bit more than 24 hours, actually. Um, and it's got the salt, as you can see. And, and I want you to look at this closely because if you haven't done this before, you might think it turned bad because it's got a, it doesn't have a great appearance to it, but that's completely normal. That's exactly what you want it to look like. For the rub, I'm going to make some fresh rosemary. I'm gonna put it in the grinder. And I'm gonna use a little, I'm not gonna use all this sage. Uh, I'm gonna use about that much. I'm just gonna put the thyme in here just like it is. A little more rosemary. And then we're gonna put equal parts of garlic powder and black pepper. Notice that I'm not putting any more salt in here. All right, and the reason I'm putting all this together is it's easier to mix it in, in this spice blender. And that is done. So we're gonna get this all completely
completely covered with olive oil and if we don't have enough of this we'll make some more all this meat we want this all covered all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the roasting pan that I'm gonna actually cook this in but before I do that I need to get the uh, onions and the carrots and the celery ready and I'm not even gonna worry about taking the skin off of this I'm just gonna cut them in half all right because we are gonna actually the juices are gonna come down in the pan and they're gonna meld with this and we will use this to make the gravy so now I'm gonna get my roasting pan then I could transfer the bird to the roasting pan and do the top. Now, some people use a rack so their air goes underneath it, but we're not going to because the bird is going to sit on these vegetables. There we go. <laughs> we dry this off again. I'm going to tuck these wings because they will burn for sure. And we want this laid out like that. That's good, that's gonna work just fine. Nothing's tight. Uh, and we'll put the olive oil on it. The turkey's been sitting out for almost two full hours. And, because we want it to be room temperature because it'll cook more evenly. All right, so we're gonna get this rub all over. I think I am gonna have enough. All right, that looks pretty good right there. What do you think? All right, she's ready to go in the oven. My oven's at 375. We're ready to put it in about the middle rack. That's about where I have it. And there she starts. We're gonna check it in 15 minutes and put the first spritz on it. You know, the most interesting thing about a spatchcock roasted turkey is where the term spatchcock comes from. You would never expect this to be an Irish phrase, but it is. And, and you would never expect it to have come from the 1700s. But what happened back then is, and really it's still today, is they wanted to cook a chicken faster. And so what they did is they took the backbone out and they knocked it all flat so that everything cooked together and it cooked in about half the time. But spatchcock literally means dispatch the cock and you've got to go to the word dispatch to get a real sense of this because uh, dispatch means to send off or away with promptness or speed and that's like the term's not used that much anymore but you used to say dispatch a messenger dispatch a telegram or dispatch an ambulance it just means to do it quickly and that's what this technique actually does in addition to making it tender and juicy and evenly cooked a lot of people attribute the first spatchcock turkey to the, this country and actually an article that was written in the New York Times in 2002 and the article was called 45 minute roast turkey and it was written by Mark Bittman and it essentially meant just removing the backbone and let the turkey lay flat and so he wrote this article and it made it very popular and it's one of the best ways to cook a turkey and so if you don't want the old-fashioned turkey this is a very good way to do it. Okay, I was gonna use a baster for this, but I thought that it's gonna like knock the, the, the herbs and stuff off the turkey, and I don't wanna do that. Uh, and this, I know this works. So we're gonna do this. Four ingredients, very simple. One cup of apple cider, six ounces of beer, a pilsner or a lager, preferably. Don't be using a bunch of flavored stuff like IPAs and things like that, it's anything strong two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. That is what we're going to baste this turkey with, but we're not gonna destroy any of the herbs on there. They're all gonna stay right there. And of course they will as he cooks longer, but we're gonna baste this probably every 10 to 15 minutes. All right, that's probably good for right now. We'll just save that right here. Rinse this off. And this is ready to go. 
we're gonna go, we put the bird on at 545, so at about six o'clock, we're gonna hit the first misting. It's been 15 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and spritz this thing the first time. And see, we're not disturbing any of our herbs. All right, I'll see you in another 15. Okay, I checked the turkey at 45 minutes and it was 83.5 degrees, uh, not even close. So this is now a full hour. It's uh, 5.45, so we started at 4.45. And uh, I'm gonna check the temperature and I'm gonna spritz it. All right. So I'm gonna go right in here. And I'm sitting at 144, 149. That's getting close. I'm gonna I mean, I'm gonna check it in one other place right now since it's getting in the ballpark. That's only 116, 115. All right. All right, so we're good. And it's time to spritz. I just got this. Uh, a digital thermometer. It's an instant read digital thermometer. It's made by List Time. And let me tell you why I really love this thing. Number one, it's got, <laughs> when you open it up, it comes on automatically. This is cool. If you want the light, just hit that. It tells you how much battery you have left. It's got, uh, first of all, it's nice and big. It's got all these temperatures on the back, so if you don't remember, you know that you want to get your poultry to 165, which is what we're gonna, that's our, that's our end result. And, and it comes with an extra battery. That's really cool. So listen, if, you, if you're in the market for one of these, uh, go down below uh, the video and uh, I'll have the link there for you for a list time instant read digital thermometer. I just checked it about 10 minutes ago and we're sitting about 140, 142 in different places. And, and now I'm starting to check this in multiple places because it's gotta be 158 everywhere. And that's the lowest we wanna go because it's gotta be 165 and we're done and we need it to raise up to that temperature. All right, I'd say another five minutes. You gotta check it in multiple places. Nothing can be less than 158. So whatever, anything that's higher, that's fine, but nothing can be lower than 158. All right, it's been another five minutes and we're in, we're close. So we're gonna check it closer. We're gonna check, make sure that there's no temperature lower than 158. All right, that's 163, 162. Okay, that's absolutely good enough. That's higher than we need it. All right, so we're gonna let it rest at least 30 minutes, between 30 and 40 minutes. Okay, it's been 35 minutes. Let's have a look at it. I think it looks pretty good. We'll start with the legs. Look at that, look how juicy that is. It's completely done. We got it absolutely cut up. I got it a little garnished. And I'll be honest, I have already tasted it. It is super, super moist. But just for the record, let's go ahead and taste it. Look at this, look at the juice on that right there. Look how juicy that is and it's totally done. All right, here we go. This is right. This is absolutely right. Come, come try a piece. Mmm, that is so tender and juicy. The flavor is amazing. Did you call that a rub? It's, it's kind of a rub. Yeah, it's a rub. It's essentially a rub. Yep. It's fantastic. Simple. Easy, but makes all the difference. But that is really good. I need right. another piece. You can have another piece. Mm. Hey, if you like this recipe, click like, subscribe, and see you next time on Lawyer in the Kitchen. <laughs> Here, okay, so what, so what are we doing? You want to put it by the can? Well. What is that on the floor next to the trash can? That's the piece of, uh, that's the piece of uh, skin off the turkey. And how did it end up there? Well, I missed the can.
Okay, so where's the can gonna go now? The can's, we're moving the can. Moving this the is for can. Terry. This is, we're where's moving the, the can, can for going? Terry. We're gonna put the can back here. Can's going over here behind the scenes. There we go, now we got it. There's the can. Is everybody happy with where the trash can is? Everybody's happy with where the can is, right. but what about this okay, I'm gonna get that chunk right of turkey? Now. All right, here we go. Watch this. Uh, all right, we will clean that later, of course. You happy with that? 